Okay. Good morning, Jema here with Jema Pentel Photography. Um, I wanted to give you guys, my clients, a little help with determining what to do with back to school since things are kind of up in the air right now um, and you might be looking at homeschooling full-time or part-time, who knows. So I brought Karen Riley here on board with me today to talk with you a little bit. So she got her started in her career as a financial analyst um, but ended up being an art teacher and she fell in love with teaching um, and found ways to make it enjoyable for everybody. Right now she runs a, a blog called Home Plate 101 um, where she offers places to do things around your home, including talking about homeschooling. I like to refer to her as a homeschool expert. Um, so Karen, let me turn it over to you. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got started with this. Okay, great. Um, so my son actually started um, kindergarten 15 years ago. And um, when he started, he went to a hybrid school, which means he went two days a week and then we schooled at home for the other three days. And my daughters uh, have two daughters that followed him um, and they have either gone that route of a hybrid school where they go to school a couple days and then we homeschool the rest of the days or um, a couple of them have um, one has health issues and the other one has some learning challenges and so I have homeschooled them at various uh, times full on because um, that's what they needed and so it's been this great experience um, and I'm glad to share it with you guys. Oh that's awesome okay so let's get started I'm gonna ask you a couple questions um, so what do you re recommend people start doing now we're still in the summertime so they need to start preparing what do you recommend they do to prepare now? I think that people need to figure out kind of what category they fall into. So some schools um, during the last spring provided, you know, perfect solution to what they needed at home. And so for those people, they probably just will get a very similar thing in the fall. Um, some people realize that they got some things and they needed some supplementation. So um, that's what I would figure out. You feel like where uh, things fell through the cracks or if you're just, your kids needed a little bit more scheduled time. So um, that's what I would analyze. So on my uh, blog, especially this post from this last week, you can see like the categories of what you would normally have for a full day at school. And then you can kind of feel out like what you did not get from your school. And then there are some people that really liked homeschooling totally um, during the spring. And so they want to go full on board. And so that I break it out. All, these are all the categories I would consider looking for curriculum and then I make a lovely spreadsheet with each of my children and what they need and then I find the curriculum that I like that matches with their learning style and then I, um, I also give y'all some links to uh, different places where you can buy curriculum because Amazon doesn't always carry everything and sometimes there are better prices especially right now people have a lot of sales going on right now so I post, um, I, in my spreadsheet, I put down the best price and then I just group, you know, all the categories together and order them and then they arrive at my door. Oh, that's awesome. Those are great tips. So let me ask you, what are your top tips for organizing the curriculum um, on a, and, a, and a budget for this? So I do use a spreadsheet and I uh, put in each of my children and each of the categories where I need each of the subjects that I need um, curriculum for. And then after I find the curriculum that I like, one thing I would recommend is um, I love a curriculum that overlaps with multiple subjects. Um, it's easier for me as a parent, and I think it makes more sense to kids to see where different things fall into history or science. I'll give you an example. Um, some uh, handwriting will be paired with character building or a Bible study, or um, it, it, on my blog, I gave some examples of how you could pair art with science, or um, a lot of um, curriculum have art with history. So there's just a lot of pairings that I think work really well for kids, especially kids that like to do hands-on things. That makes total sense. Um, so what are your favorite ways to organize a space for, for all of this to take place in your home? So I, um, I'm a homeschooler that does not like to have the homeschool blow up in my house. And so I like a space, even if you, if I didn't have a dedicated room, cause we haven't always had a dedicated room. Um, I would have a bookshelf and, um, 
it was all homeschool stuff. So I, each kid had two shelves. They have one for all the books that they're not currently using or the teacher's manuals that I need. And um, then they have their other shelf for the books with a basket that they are currently using and the supplies they need. And so it's real easy and they can put any extra stuff on the shelf if they want on their shelf. Um, but it made it really easy for me to go, okay, where's that book we're going to need at the end of the school year. I didn't have to worry because I, Yes, you can lose things if um, if it's not organized. I feel that would be me losing things. So, well, these were great tips. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is link to your blog post um, to share with my audience so they can find all this information and your contact information so they can reach out to you if they have any more detailed questions. Um, but this was really helpful, and I'm sure people will love getting this information. So thank you for coming on today to do this with me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having me. I really um, appreciate that. Um, hopefully I can help people get through all this well. Yeah, thank you so much. And I appreciate it. I'll talk to you later. Okay, bye. bye.